And so now you can see the return of your Kalmar ratio portfolio. It is lower in terms of return than the mean variance criterion. But as you can see, it is much, much more stable. So hi guys, and welcome in this new video. The goal of this video is to explain you how to create your trading bots portfolio or your assets portfolio using a very specific optimization criterion. In one of the previous video, we have talked about the mean variance optimization. So that's a very standard, a basic method, which work very well, of course, but I want to show you something more specific this time. And this time we'll talk about the Kalmar ratio criterion. This criterion is more adapted to trading strategies because it will reduce more the drawdown. Because keep in mind that always when you're trying to create your portfolio and when you're evaluating your trading strategies, each time you have two metrics that balance themselves. The return, which is how much you will earn, and the drawdown, which is the risk, how much you could lose. And if you don't know how to create this type of trading strategies, if you want to learn how to create your own trading strategies from the data import to the live trading, just take a look of the AlphaCon program into the description. In the mean variance criterion, the risk metric was the variance of the assets variation, but I don't really like this option. I prefer to use the drawdown to evaluate my risk. So that's exactly what you will do. And to do so, we'll create the Kalmar ratio criterion. And more precisely, we'll create the opposite Kalmar ratio criterion because we will do a minimization. And as the Kalmar ratio is return divided by absolute value of the drawdown. It means that the higher this criterion is, the better our portfolio will be. We need to put a minus behind this value. To create the criterion, it will be exactly as before. We take our data, so this data frame there, we multiply it by the weight because each trading strategy or each asset will have an associated weight and then we just sum and then we need to compute our different metrics for the return it's pretty simple i just take the last value and for the drawdown i will use my previous function dd function which allow me to compute the whole drawdown time series and i take the minimum value because the drawdown is initially always a negative value and i put a minus to make it positive and to be 100% sure I put a positive value, I can use directly the np.absoluteValue function. And then I create my criterion, return of a max drawdown, and I need to put a minus behind because I will minimize this criterion. Then for the optimization, it's the same thing as before. So I will advise you to take a look to the previous video if you are not comfortable with the things I will explain you right now. First, you need to put the criterion, then you need to put an initial value for the weights, we have put an NumPy error containing only ones, okay? Then you need to create the constraint using this form there. And for us, the constraint will be, I want to use 100% of my capital. That's logic, because if I use only 10%, 20%, I will have 80%, let's say, of my capital that is sleeping. So that is not bringing more money, okay? So I want to use all my capital. Then you need to set the bounds for each variable, okay? So for each trading strategy or for each asset. And that's a very interesting thing because I can modify it. I can put, for example, 0 0.05. It means that my allocation to each asset needs absolutely to be between 0 0.05 and one, okay? So it means that at least on each trading strategy, because you have them that are profitable, you want to invest 0 0.05, okay? And then with the last 50%, you can invest them like you prefer, okay? But for now, we'll just let 0, 1. It means that from 0 to 1, the algorithm can choose the value it prefers, okay? So that's very interesting. So you know now this functions there. And so you just have to put it here into the minimize function, like in the previous criterion. The only thing we have changed there is the criterion. So you put your initial values, the method, you put the args. So you need the train set to compute your portfolio. So you need to put the args, you put the bounds, the constraint, and you put option disp 
equal true. So it means you will have these values there, okay? Then I run and I see that my maximum Kalmar ratio over the train set is 0 0.57, okay? And it is with this allocation. And here you see if I change the bonds from 5% to 100% for each asset, you can see that there each asset has at least 5% of allocation. So that's a very good way to say, okay, you have 50% of my capital that you can invest like you prefer, but at least put 5% of my capital on each trading strategy because I have worked for them. I want to add them into my portfolio. And so now you can see the return of your Kalmar ratio portfolio. It is lower in terms of return than the mean variance criterion. But as you can see, it is much, much more stable. So, and it's something in my opinion that we should prefer, okay? And to be sure about that, we can just take a look to the drawdown. For the mean variance criterion, it's 8% for the maximum drawdown. And for the Kalmar ratio, it's a bit less than 3.5%. So it's the half. So if we compute the Kalmar ratio over the mean variance criterion, it's 140 divided by eight. So it's close to 18. So it's a very, very, very huge Kalmar ratio, but it comes from only the test set. So it means that it's just due to randomness, okay? Generally, you will not have something as high than that in life trading on the long term, but on short terms, you can have these very high values, okay? And so if I compute my Kalmar ratio over these values, so let's say 75% divided by 3.5, my Kalmar ratio is higher than 20. So that's a very good news because that's why you wanted to optimize, okay? So I hope you like this video. If you have any question, feel free to drop it into the comments hour or to ask it directly into our Discord forum. And see you soon in the next video.